if you're not a people person, real estate is not for you. And this was one I had to learn for myself, too, because I am not much of a people person. Kirby could tell you all about my people skills. They're not existent. So this is something I had to learn. You know, I'm getting better with it, getting better with talking to people. I just don't like interacting with people. I get annoyed. I don't want to hear from people. But it's necessary in real estate. Very essential. And it's something that you have to learn in order to succeed, I believe, in real estate you, in, in all fields. Because you're going to have to learn how to communicate with tenants how to market your property, how to advertise your property. You're going to have to learn how to communicate with, say, property management. I don't have this experience yet um, with using an official property management company, but you're going to have to learn how to communicate with them, communicate with handymen, communicate with realtors, all sorts of things. So this is definitely a learning experience for me. I can say that I've gotten better over time just doing the work and getting the experience but this is a this is a an essential skill i would say in in this field you know when and this is a lost art or this is something that's not talked about a lot especially on the youtube social media space everybody talks about real estate as you know you can make money which is true they can talk about taxes, depreciation, all that other stuff, which is true. But it's more of a customer service business. Because So understand, when you get into this realm, you're dealing with people's lives. I mean, it's not like being, you know, an online seller or something like that. You can't treat people like that because you're dealing with their lives. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's all about how much money you can bring in and how much you can depreciate, you know, and get the tax benefits and taxes set up. But if you want to be in this game for the long term, you have to understand that you're dealing with people's lives. And I'm a believer of karma, meaning if you screw people over, it's going to come back to you in a lot of ways. So what I mean by that is when when it comes to the ideal of eviction, yeah, it can be cut and dry. You evicting somebody. If be like, oh, they didn't pay me on the first eviction, eviction, eviction. I mean, does life happen? Yes. Do you have to pay for everybody's life situations? No. Do you know need to know how to articulate that? So everybody has an understanding. These are conversations you should have before you bring tenants in. This is conversations you need to have you know, on the, you know, exit process, especially if you're a self-manager, you need to have the ability to communicate. If if you're just, let's say you're managing a property by yourself and you're not using a property manager and only time you talk to your tenant is when you're raising the rent. It's not going to go over easy for that tenant because again, just like the world is struggling, this tenant is probably struggling. The reason why they're probably struggling, they're renting from you. I mean, if they had their financial situation together, they probably would own something or bought something later on in life. But understanding that these tenants are dependent on you for everything. I mean, for making sure the maintenance is done on the property, making sure the taxes are paid, making sure the insurance is taken care of, making sure, you know, different avenues and aspects are being done for the well-being of their family. Um, even when it comes to acquiring tenants and things like that, people make life decisions on where they live. So you being somebody, and I hate the term landlord because it's not simply cut and dry as landlord. If this was back in medieval times and I was really the landlord, people didn't pay the rent uh, off with your head, off with your hands. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> you have to be somebody that knows how to articulate and, and be able to deal with certain situations but understand the power you have yes it's about making money but understand that you're affecting people's lives so whatever you do is make sure you have the ability to communicate and understand the power that you have now am i saying you should let a tenant sit in your property and and they not pay you hell no but 
deep guidelines and, and deep vetting processes should be implemented in place before that even, before it even gets there, before they even sign the lease. It shouldn't just be like, oh, here go a lease, you take the lease, that's it. It should be more of a conversation. So go through the lease and be like, hey, you see this point, you see this point, you see this point, I'm sticking to these points. Are you understand? So they should have an understanding before they move in day one, these are the main sticking points that we're sticking to. It says no pets. I'm sticking to no pets. I'm sticking to, um, I'm sticking to no smoking in in the unit or if whatever you do. I'm sticking to I'm sticking to these things. Have that conversation. Even though they're signing it, you want to point it out and say these are my pain points. And if you break my pain point, we have this understanding. Because a lot of tenants, and I know it's a contract. A lot of tenants they just happy to get in the place. They gloss over whatever the lease is. They're just trying to get in. But for you and your understanding, you want to make sure. That's why I always, your my pain points, I always have the tenant initial buy them because I go over them and point it out and say, this here is very important. This is very important. This is very important. So there is an understanding. Once you break one of those rules that I just told you that was very important, then we have a problem. Can life happen and, oh, my paycheck was short this week? Yeah, those things happen. Yeah, you can... It's up to you as the landlord, I wouldn't, to waive the late fee. But if you understand that, that's fine. But life will happen. Especially hourly workers, and most people, most people that's renting are usually hourly workers. Things can happen. Paychecks can be messed up. Timesheets can be messed up. Life things can happen. Insurance problems, medical problems, that stuff really do happen. But if you just come off as just cutthroat, 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 Word will get around, especially if you're in a small community. Word will get around on who you are, and then you will become more of an ostracized person than the person that people want to go to. I mean, I know a big uh, investor, like a Wall Street investor that's in my area. They're very cutthroat. So now people be like, okay, I want to rent that house. Who owns it? And then when this name comes up, they'll be like, no, I don't want to deal with them because it's just... There's no IPC skills in there. That's interpersonal communication skills. It's just pay, get out. I don't I don't care what's going on. And especially in these times where things are getting harder, you need these skills more than less because it's going to be a lot of pain coming and you got to be able to navigate the area. Alex, what you got before we close out? Yeah, I would say as an investor in real estate i i definitely do the best i can to take care of the tenants make sure that their living conditions comfortable that they've got everything they need everything's functioning right so that they're comfortable and they have no issues to you know pay the rent or you know i've heard you say like some tenants they feel like oh why should i pay the rent when the toilet's not working stuff like that you know i'm trying to prevent any issues any altercations just make sure that their living conditions good and i know that if i have to put money into the property it's into my own property so it's gonna come back but with all that me said guys hit the like button share this video subscribe and we will see you guys on the next one